like they just want that early game. They've been a team that have been able to utilize both early and late game, but now it's all on that early game once again, just like in game one, but it is even riskier. Well, the people's champion, the heroes, escape Five seconds the pits the of hell, or will Geek Fam secure Smash the 2-0? Oh. Back we go to the land of dawn, and Geek Fam against EVOS. Welcome Let's to see Mobile Land of Legend. Dawn. Evos Glory should break the momentum here and now. Meanwhile, Geek Fam, they're comfortable, but their job is not done. So initially, as we get into the game, as we want to talk about the drafts even deeper, we get to the point where CC, again, has been the keys to victory, has been the main factor as to how Evos Glory are able to take their games. Look at their composition now. They lack a whole lot of CC, right? The X-Borg, no CC. That's, it's Dreams and Clocken. That's the two CCs, and it's not even like big game-changing sure. CCs that they've been able to utilize on the Minotaur, the Tig, the Edith, Master Assassin, still for Chidera and Brands. That's my question then. How do they really create this big engage towards Geek Fam? Will they be banking on a clutch IMU, or will they have something else in their pocket? I think it's a mix of both, honestly. They want to use that IMU to steal away these Nether Realms, this Minotaur as well, with that Minion's Fury. But mainly, how they're going to be able to look for these pickoffs is through that chip, that map control of his, where he can rotate across the map very, very fast, teleport, put that shortcut down, and then overwhelm Geek Fam with damage. It's kind of like what Geek Fam were doing to them with that Masha, with that mm -hmm. composition earlier, but they had CC. That's the difference now. For Evos, they're just poking, poking, poking Geek Fam. Pokes are in the name of the game for EVOS glory, but they have to be weathering the first few minutes because from the looks of it, Geek Fam, they do also have that strong skirmishing power. When this Yuzong is online, the BDF can always ensure that you have a great opening, especially when you also have Boloiski with the Minotaur that, you know, knockups will be insane for EVOS to handle. Oh, I was already annoying earlier in game number one without the sprint. Now with the sprint, especially up against a Lancelot, the Cloud's already really, really good at dodging away from the Lancelot assassination. Geek fam, looks like they are down a level to Claw and Fluffy. Yeah, Falcon already level four. And a boy still looking for that timing to pop that nether realm, perhaps assist them to collect that turtle. But no, it seems like both teams are taking their time here in that first mute take. They will re-engage soon, I think, because this uh, turtle, turtle will be very, very important, especially in the early stages wow. of the game. But Boloiski just being shadowed by Dream, so Dream's just playing close proximity, but an Avel. Oh, 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 good puncture! But Minion Fury actually connecting onto his Boloiski. club. No fall of damage, though. Now take a look at Brands and Dreams. They collapse onto his Beloy. He will fall first in this game, and Fluffy here will have some of Firag armor, but that's one for all. I understand what Geek Fam were doing there. They didn't want to go for the turtle because they have an overwhelming advantage in the neutral objectives. But what Evos have is a very mobile, fast clearing jungler. So they want to deny that off of him, that clear speed. But it has only given Evos a chance. Oh, neutral objective. Oh, it's messy. Glockham gets it. Luke very low. Looking for an escape. Oh, Glockham secures that kill. Fluffy still survives. Oloiski now in the fray, but it will not do business. It's again a favorable trade towards the White Tigers. Glockham with the clutch plays. The fangs are dull, but the claws are still sharp enough to be able to carry that fight and win the neutral contest against Geek Fam. Evos now online. Catastrophic for Geek Fam in the early game. 2,000 gold lead. Remember what we were talking about in the draft, Evo's Glory. It's basically game one, but riskier. They are doubling down on the early game. The fact that they have almost a 2,000 gold lead in the first three minutes, now this has to raise concerns within the team of Geek Fam. They need to be able to weather the storm, and technically they still have ways to do so. They have that Minion's Fury, very good disengage tool, they have a Nether Realm as well. So, for Geek Fam, it's all about slowing the tempo down, but for Evos, it's about how to find ways to dive, to force this pace, this incredible pace, onto Geek Fam. And Annabelle's really doing a good job in that jungle matchup. This is why the Lancelot, this, I mean, technically, this is why Nolan and Ling was banned. They didn't expect the Lancelot does a very similar job, though. Yeah, that could really be the case for Annabelle. It's just going to be very, very, you know, volatile and just pushing towards Geek Fam, running it down like the same that look, uh, Luke did in the last game. But for EVOS, I feel like they have everything in their hands. You're just playing the slow. And Dreams, 
will have that shortcut to pop. So it will never be like a 2v2. It will just instantly become a 2v4. And when you have this Lancelot just flying into you, you have that maybe Clocker with a Clutch Steel, with a Clutch IMU. That could just turn the tables around for Geek Fam. So Geek Fam, they need to be on the lookout, especially Ooh. for Luke. Teams here, teams though. Gosh, of course. Sandro's your boy. Both teams just hovering around here looking for potential trades. But let's see here, the tur turtle fights. The second turtle fight. Geek Fam, again, taking your time, both actually, Vos Glory. Take a look at Lancelot, who will be top side. Clockun takes another round. It seems again, both teams not committing on towards a big fight just yet. They're not really interested in just running towards the skirmishes. Wow. I feel like they're just playing it safe because they know Geek Fam do have that tool as well. But Chadera! Oh, Annabelle, sneaky wow. one! <laughs> They would thought Annabelle would be around the turtle, but he went. What? Annabelle! The shortcuts! Retribution connects. Evo's glory secures it. Now Geek Fam, they are running for the hills. Take a look at Luke. Soaking damage taken down. Evo's glory. Poetry in motion. Perfectly done. Perfectly executed. That ultimate of Annabelle might as well be the perfect execution because that's what they were able to do. My goodness, that was masterful. Playing around the turtle, knowing that Geek Fam will not be able to force this with Evos having such a big lead at the start and the force error was just so, oh my God, that was, that was a nerdgasm for sure for Mirko, man. <laughs> I was so, I was already like shaking my head during that play because it was just so good. They knew that they had a teleport. They knew that Geek Fam cannot force the turtle. And they knew that if they kept on posturing aggressively, Geek Fam would think that the Lancelot is around them. Yeah. They would completely forget that this Lancelot can take the shortcut. So exactly. can Brands. They get rid of Chadera. And then it's a man advantage 5v4 on top of the big level lead that Annabelle has. And he got the turtle. I don't know how he got the turtle, wow. but he got the turtle. He was already ahead, but my god. Wow, Evos. <laughs> it felt like Annabelle was playing Ling the way that he was able to kill Chadera up top and then he just printed down bottom. But it's all, of course, due to the fact that they have the shortcut and he was keeping it for that clutch moment to win the turtle battle. And now up 4-0 in the kills department. Now, Geek Fam, how do they respond towards Evos's aggression? Well, it's back again to that forcing of slow tempo, but it's tough for Geek Fam, because the thing is, even if they try to force that force tempo, they go and clear out these side lanes, they give Chadera and a boy some space to farm. Evos are completely fine now, just with that 5,000 gold lead as well. If both equally scale up to the 10th minute with this gold lead still being in favor of Evos, Evos will reach their mid-game power spike way faster than Geek Fam will reach their power spike, and that will end up with Evos being able to control the map even more. Remember, this is a chip. This is a... Not a normal, normal snowballing game. This is an Evo's Glory full double down on an early game with a chip. The snowball might be a bit too tough for Geek Fam to handle, but again, Geek Fam, we've seen them pull off crazy miracle comebacks, and it will be the same here. They will need to do that. They need to find a miracle. Yes. All three. Last turtle here, right? 5,000 gold lead. Perfect tur turtle for Evo's Glory's side. And Geek Fam, for now, they know they will not take unnecessary fights. So let's just wait it out. It's a 6,000 gold lead, mind you, in eight minutes. So, yeah, things are not looking good here for Geek Fam. But they know. They know they're ready. They will farm, 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 especially for Jadera. Three items, maybe then they will be ready to fight. At this stage of the game, they don't really have the capability to fight back and just outskirmish Evos in a 5v5 or even a 3v3. But what are the timers of Geek Fam? What are they waiting for, Miracle? Chadera for his three item power spike dreams. The shortcut as well. That's a good start. Oh, towards Chadera. Ooh. Chadera. Blazing Red BMI will save his life. Oh, the turret will fall. Annabelle almost catching a Blois body. But Bloisky will fall. Now taking to the back side. It's actually Black Dragon form trying to distract. Wow. The two members Ooh. are already down. And they will add one more. Three members out. They either slow it down or try to match that fast pace. But if you do, the odds are against your favor. Evos, Annabelle is online, 14. Four levels ahead of Ray. <laughs> Yikes. Annabelle is just rolling with the snowball lead that he has. He's just out jungling Ray, especially as a Lancelot. He's just playing it so swimmingly. Now for Evos, they have all the advantages that they need to close out. I mean, they have the side lanes pushing up. Chadera is forced to answer and address 
The lane's pushing towards him, and you also have Fluffy just in the side lanes, constantly pressuring you. So Geek Fam, they're split, they're split up. They either want to fight back, or they just want to try to allocate the side laners to clear up the waves up top and down bottom. It's... I mean, allocating the goal towards the Claude has been what they were trying to do the whole time, right? But at this point, I think they might just have to sacrifice these Tier 2 so that they can actually get the farm that they need. If the Tier 2 still are up, Geek Fam can actually just play in the enemy jungle, force these sandwich plays. By the way, Anvil is level 15 at the 10th minute of the game. This is an MPL ID Season 7 throwback, kind of, from the Assassins, the Marksmen in the jungle, <laughs> from being able to farm up to level 15 at 10 minutes. So, yeah, the snowball is getting out of control. They're almost beating the clock with that gold lead. 9.5 in 10 minutes. That'll mean that Geekfam are going to be placed in a very similar position that they were able to force Evos on in game one. It's all about waiting for a mistake at this point because this control is overwhelming. Yeah, just like what Mirko mentioned, deja vu of game number one. Back then it was Evos waiting for a mistake to happen. Now it's Geekfam on their knees looking for something that they could leverage. But EVOS, it looks like they're playing a flawless game. They're yeah. able to just allocate the neutral objectives. They win it out. They fight systematically and using their ultimates in a way that it will be so, so advantageous towards them. The shortcut has been very clutch for Dreams to just help and, you know, have a teammate's corral behind him, try to look for a fight. And it's just going, going well for EVOS glory. Dreams though. Let's see here, looking for an engage, perhaps looking for information. Geek Fam still kill us, and Evos Glory still deathless. Lord is marching bottom side. And also do know that earlier on, we talked about, uh, Raptor talked about Chip being left open. And now mm. take a look at the value that Evos Glory is giving. Now Dreams Dot with an engage, potentially Chidera still holding mm. on, dealing a damage. But Geek Fam, this is the first Lord. I'm sure they will take care of this first Lord, no problem. Luke is Whoa. looking for an engage. Oh, Annabelle oh. jumps in. This oh. might be almost a mistake there. I mean, Geek Fam still holds their ground. Fleet footwork from Annabelle is just bouncing left and right. Luke, oh my, the damage is enough. Annabelle, what the heck? That is an assassin's job. Now, Geek Fam, they will lose a member on this defense. Evo's glory, they will eye for that mid turret. Annabelle jumps back in. Will they have enough firepower to defend this mid turret? Oh, Clark, that's a mistake! Where is Drunchin here? Drunchin. From it's a clock on the look at the Nether Realm. Geek Fam looking for the kill. Rams takes turret top side, but Annabelle finds a killing spree. Geek Fam lost another member. Annabelle looking for the back side. Oh! Finds a boy to claim the double. Annabelle with the confidence, but Loiski jumping in though. A mistake, no immortality for this guy, but he still survives. Geek Fam still holding on for two turrets. What was more impressive? Geek Fam still finding a way to defend that or Annabelle just <laughs> styling on him? I can't decide. Both teams played so, so well. There was one loophole before the team fight that I was about to talk about, right? For Evos, I noticed that for Clockon, he's actually going for a very defensive build. It's a bit... It's too defensive for how ahead they are. He went for the Blood Wings, the NOD, and the Winter Truncheon. You'd expect on the Valentina, you would want to go for extra damage here, mm. especially considering most of your damage will be physical, right? But because Clockun went for this safer, uh, more utility-based build, you can see definitely that they were lacking a little bit of that magic damage when Annabelle, Brands, and Fluffy try to go in to deal damage. Defam were actually able to withstand that because they rushed a lot of these physical Defense items like the anti curus all the way straight up from the from the get-go. We have a game fact though. Game fact by GoPay. Chadera becomes the player with the most plot picks 70 times in MPL ID season 13 with the highest win rate as well. So yeah, Chadera has been with his power pick, with his comfortable pick in the first two games. But this time, not in this game. This game, he hasn't really been able to find the angle. Sure, he had a few blazing duets, oh. but a jump in though. Fluffy wants to pull the trigger here, realizing that... Oh, take a look at Bolorski! Now you see him, now you're going Annabelle. again! Annabelle claims their double! Now with the shortcut, perhaps he might for the... Looking for the third member, and Annabelle collects the third. Brands now on the other side. Wipeout. Brand finds one, and Luke, one man standing dragon against five white tigers. Overwhelmed, and Evo's glory will find glory in game number two. With this, 
The series stands to 1-1. One, one. The White Tigers claw back, and they bite back the villains. The villains flawless no more, as EVOS Glory take game number two. We're all still tied up 1-1. One, one. One to one, an equalizer by Evo's Glory up against Geek Fam, and it's done with a very risky composition to pull off, yet they pulled it off. That utility build for the Valentina still ended up great. And actually, in that team fight, that was probably the highest chance that Geek Fam had to actually turn things around. That was a bit of nature already built for Chidera, but still, the fact that the export dove in together with Annabelle created a big shroud where they were unable to really think, react. So many effects happening in your face with a nature not popped just there. And I think Reptar definitely has a lot to say about this game. Oh, for sure, dude. I doubted that Lancelot pick, but I was reminded by Annabelle, Reptar, you are in MPL Indonesia. <laughs> you are not back home. We're assassins shine in this region. And Annabelle was an absolute...